Hello friends, my name is Theo and today in this exciting Meester Media tutorial we're talking about using clone stamping and tracking to do some intermediate blemish removal inside the fusion module of DaVinci Resolve. So starting on DaVinci Resolve, we've got our clip loaded in here and then we'll take this into fusion by hitting shift five. Also, if you have the workspace show page navigation selected, then it'll be in a little button down here, but I like using the keyboard shortcuts and so should you. All right, so now we've got our clip here looking, you know, like it needs some work, but that's what we're here for. So the first thing I'm gonna do in this is just drop down a little color space transform. Just so we can see what we're working with a little bit better. I'm going to change this from the source color space, which is 4.6K film and source gamma, which is once again, 4.6K film. And this goes into our timeline color space of Rec 709. And that looks great. So now you can see we've got a couple little spots we wanna remove. Lucky for you guys, I have bad skin. So it makes this nice and easy to work on. So I think the one we'll work on together is Let's say this one. So obviously lots of options, but you know, this will be the one to work on. So we'll drop down a tracker node and I'm just going to set this outside of our stream just because we only need an input. We're not gonna be taking any direct outputs from this node and you'll see about that in a bit. So we'll take our tracker point, which it automatically created for us and we'll go ahead and drag it down to a little spot there and we'll make this much smaller because then it will track faster. We don't need all that extra stuff. We just need this little spot right here. Very excellent. So now we've got that selected. We can go ahead and we'll hit track backwards first. There we go. And if we hit one on our tracker, you can see what we're tracking. So it looks like it's doing a good job sticking right to that point. Excellent, everything looks good there. And as we scrub through, you can see it sticks. And you see that our GUI for our tracker updates separately from our video. So just, you know, be aware of that if you think that it's not working well. So we've got that. And now the next step is to add down a paint node, but we're gonna do this in a special way. So you can just add a paint node right in line, but I think the much cooler way to do that is to sort of paint on a separate layer. So we're gonna add down a background node first. And we're gonna set this all the way to transparent. So if we preview this with our viewer one, you can see before it was opaque and now it's transparent. So this will be what we'll connect our paint node to. So drop down a paint and we'll also drop down a merge and we'll make our background our background and our paint our foreground. And now as we look in our paint node, you see we don't have anything to paint on. So how is this gonna work? Well, what we can actually do is once you select our clone mode and stroke mode, and make sure you click both of these because clone obviously does the cloning action, but selecting stroke makes it so you only have one stroke for the whole thing. Multi-stroke is the default and then it only does one frame at a time. So always make sure you have stroke enabled for stuff like this. That'll cause you a big headache if not, so it's worth sort of lingering on for a bit. All right, so now how are we going to sample this other node when we're all the way over here and there's nothing connected upstream of it? Well, we've got this source tool button. So we can drag our in this case, it would be our color space transform right in there and see if we just do a quick little, just do something random. You see it's painting just like we want it. Now that looks terrible and crazy. And another little trick we're gonna do, which I think this is a really cool trick, is since we're gonna end up disabling this color space transform node because we're going into color. So we're gonna give our colorist the log image of this shot and we don't wanna do any work for him or her, or however that person identifies. So we're gonna drop down a pipe connector node. We do that by alt left clicking. So what this does is just a basically empty node that you normally use for routing, but you can actually, you know, reference it in our paint node. So here we had our color space transform before. If we click and drag our pipe router node, you see it's got pipe router one. Excellent. So now we're sampling the image from right here in the middle of these two nodes, which is pretty handy. So whenever we hit control P to disable that, we won't be disabling our source and we can see we've got our thing right here. So now our next step is to actually do some painting. So once again, we've got clone enabled, stroke, and then we'll control scroll wheel to zoom in some. And we'll go over to our brush controls because you see our brush is a little big right now. I'll bring this size down. That looks about good. And we'll hold down Alt and click to get our sampling point. And then we'll just click over here. Just paint that right away. Nice, and that looks great. But of course, our image moves. So over there, it doesn't look great anymore. So let's go ahead and just do that one more time. That looks even better than before. So now what we'll do to attach this is we can access the stroke we just made by going over to our modifiers tab. So modifiers, and you see we've got stroke two. This is actually the current stroke that is on the screen right now with the little that we would be making. 
So we actually want to go to stroke one instead. You see that automatically disables stroke two. So we went to the right place. And now we want to go under stroke controls, right click on center, go to connect to and the tracker one path position. And now you can see, just double click off this. I will do our output on viewer two and I'll do our input with the color space transform on viewer one. And you can see, so we play through that little bit, the blemish is gone. And if we want to, we can say, you know, maybe we don't like our source clone point that much. We can move that by doing apply control. So this offset will control where we're sampling from. So you can see if we move our X and Y a little bit, there we go. There you can really see it's changing where we're sampling from. So let's go ahead and move this the other way a little bit. There we go. Now it's blending in a little better. Oh, maybe not. So we'll change this around some more. There we go. And that's looking pretty good. And you saw I got rid of our controls on the screen just by clicking off of our paint node. So now I've got that. And we can just keep doing that process over and over again. So this is one of many, many digital makeup techniques. I've got in the bag. So if you want to see more stuff like this, be sure to leave a comment below. Check out meastermedia.com slash products if you want to support the channel. And once again, I've been Theo with Meester Media. I hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye.